Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shari. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Gwen. Oh, I kind of said it. <laughs> that was melodic. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's me, Shade, a.k.a. Bunzel Mommy. Bandishi. Bandishi. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm, joined good. By, I'm joined by the bed brat. She's still rocking her signature new glasses. They're red. They're exciting. They're vibrant. They're bright. Just like her bright, beautiful soul. <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? <laughs> and Shell's oh. Pinky. She's giving us a look today she is giving a beat face but snatch maybe this back. is natural it's just a snatch just my eyebrow tattoos it's the eyebrows it's the look it's the vibe it's giving la it's giving i care it's giving i don't have sweatpants on under my top do you you do not pants dressed fully dressed a bitch is dressed wow oh, we love to see it no those are workout shorts Oh, <laughs> those look like you had on like leather pants. From yeah, it's like a trouser. Oh, no. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, damn bitch, where are you going? But, yeah. you know, I'm not mad at you. Anywho, um, I'm really excited for this episode. I am going to jump right in with Write a Reply because I have some crazy shit to share. Ooh. I'm going to start with my red. Insurance the ghetto. Mm-hmm. I just found out that my therapist is not covered under my new insurance. I am self-insured because the offerings that my company have are trash. And I was like, I'd rather just look into options to pay my own insurance than paying y'all because the deductible is trash. The copay is trash. What is the point? So I found an option. And the first thing I inquired about was, is my therapist covered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Cool. Now, months later, come to find out she's not because she's covered under her group practice, but not her private practice. And it's a whole thing. So I didn't have my session today, but I don't know. I'm feeling okay. Mm. I guess I was looking forward to talking to her, but y'all, I've been praying. So, you know, we giving it up to God these days, (laughs) but still it's been wild to now have to go back and forth and figure out this insurance stuff. So she's going to see if I can get in potentially through her group practice. I'm looking into alternative insurance. The Mm. insurance companies that are accepted by her private practice are like the the big wigs, like Aetna, Cigna, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me just go see like what it would be for me to self-insure through some of these companies. mm -hmm. 650, 875, 910. Per session? No, no, no. no. A month. For a month for my insurance cost. That's ridiculous. Insanity. Oh, my God. I don't understand how how insurance works. Sanity. Do you know, like, I think I knew this, but I didn't really. It makes sense in theory, but, like, what the fuck? The deductible shit? I still don't even know why we have those. But for all of my insurance, my 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 therapy sessions last year, for like the first ten, I had to pay out of pocket one fifty until you hit the deductible. I hit the deductible, and then it became like ten dollars a session. Now that we're in the Damn. new year, I'm getting that one fifty charge again. And low key, the therapy sessions have not been giving, so I think I'm about to cut ties. Oh, because it's just I'm like I'm paying one fifty for this. Yikes! I told y'all, just get on your knees and pray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to be giving it up to God too, girl. I mean, I glory. do love therapy and I need to figure it out because I at least need to go like sometimes. You know what it is, really, too? I just like that I'm able to just say all the things and I it's not like it's a judge free zone. Like I tell her all the fucked up shit that I do or I fucked up shit that I think about doing. And she's like, okay, like we can work on this. And I'm like, thank you so much. Like I'm not fucked up maybe i am but whatever um and i think that's better than just harboring it inside of me mm-hmm. so you know i'm, I'm not finding <laughs> when i go out just i'm like yeah you know i'm tired working a lot 
Oh no! Same old, same old. I'd be like, I don't really have nothing else to say. I want to fuck everybody, <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> and she's yeah, like, it's just like the time in your life. <laughs> and she's like, okay. <laughs> and usually, when I say, say things more. that I think are like crazy, she'll be like, "Yeah, well, you know, that's pretty normal." So, and I'm like, "Well, guess that that was a dead end road there." <laughs> uh, okay, that was like the you, big thing I came to talk about. Do and, you guys go to your therapist with like totally different things than you would go to to like? loved ones say that again when you go to your therapist do you talk about like totally different topics that than the ones that you talk to with your loved ones yes and no so like I will have pretty open conversations especially with my sister but like it's kind of like I'll tell her I have urges blah 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 whatever and then, okay, when I say urges, I don't want people to think I'm Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, yeah, Mike, everyone knows this. <laughs> everyone knows this. I don't believe in monogamy. I'm in a monogamous relationship. So I'm always constantly trying to figure out, like, why am I so corny all the time? And so, you know, I can talk to my sister about that. And she'll be like, oh, well, you know, I think there should be fluidity and blah, 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 whatever. That's an opinion. But when I talk to my therapist, she's like, okay, but now we're getting to you understanding behavioral, like, tendencies when do you feel these urges when do you feel like you lose impulse control what are you doing what is happening what are you lacking da, da, da. so we're getting like more solution oriented and that's what I need I need to understand that I do these things when x or I'm triggered mm-hmm. by x so she's like okay when you're drunk which is something that limits your inhibitions you feel more open to doing these things so maybe when you're out drinking you should be very Mindful about who you're around so that you don't have urges to do blah, blah, blah. You know, like we're coming up with plans to fix the problems. Question, just playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Not that I advocate for the devil, but (laughs) isn't it interesting, though, that a piece of her response probably has like her own background? Because another therapist might be like, well, why don't you just. Why aren't you just in a relationship that's non monogamous? Oh, if that's oh and what she'll, you feel. she'll ask me that too. She'll, we go through like all the options, but yes, it is also influenced by her thoughts because if she was, you know, a devout Catholic woman, she might be like, you're a whore. Right. <laughs> so I, or think- someone who's super like, sexually liberal liberated mm-hmm. she might be like you don't have to control those urges follow right. She'd be how like, you feel go cheat girl <laughs> <laughs> no and i think there probably are people that have practices like that now where like you can seek out like a i am a sex positive therapist yeah. blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah 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 like i'm sure that exists but i think i got a friend that goes to a psychoanalyst and like that's just next level just brain stuff it's like brain, brain yeah. patterns brain wiring and that seems like that would be a little bit more divorced from like bias and but i'm like also emotion um the child of a woman who believed in corporal punishment so i <laughs> did not develop emotional intelligence so i'm still working through getting there so mm-hmm. I, I i need to get to the baby steps of like you felt sad in that moment and i'm like oh that's what that was. Got it. Copy. Moving <laughs> on. And then maybe I can advance up to like the neurons or whatever, the synapses. I don't know what the fuck is going on in the brain. But yeah, I'm I'm at base level. Like there yeah. is a distinction between just happy and angry. There are other places that you can be. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh. that's why like because we have the same therapist and she has the emotions wheel and i was like i'm tired of that damn wheel and shadi's like i love the wheel wheel. i need to figure out what my emotions are i need the wheel i have no i'm like what i'm like oh my god are they different every week like every week it's the same words it's the same wheel but like you're identifying like what you felt in a week and so i got really upset about something and i was like i was so mad i wanted to like break everything and she goes well, notice that anger is very close to sadness. And so she's like, you were disappointed and you like felt disrespected, but like you just go straight to I'm anger. mad. So, yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. damn. Literally, my emotions are always, I'd be like, I'm a little sleepy and a little anxious. <laughs> Literally every week. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, like, I want to go to a rage club and like break things open. She's like, how did you feel in that moment? I was like, like, I want to get a bat and like bang everyone's heads open. And I'm like, you know, the norm. Wait, that's so funny. I thought it, this made me think of like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Glenn would be angry. Or, I mean, Glenn would be sleepy, sleepy. and anxious. Yeah. Shadi would be angry or ecstatic. Yeah. <laughs> And what would you be? Perfect. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> I was going to say praying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Devout. Okay. Devout. Well, I didn't mean for the insurance conversation to go here, but this is, I need to figure out my insurance because I need to be in therapy because I am unwell. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Maybe you should get on Medicaid. Let's talk offline. Can I do that? I was, oh, because you I have Medicaid for a long time. Let's on Medicaid. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got, <laughs> I, for older people. I got a man. Let's all right. <laughs> okay. Glenn allegedly Fence. has a man. Right. Federal uh-huh. is, I'm not involved. <laughs> right, 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 right. I don't want to be involved either. Shit. I'm not trying to be on that. No, no, no. But um, I mean, you might make below the threshold. So that's all I'm saying. True. These days. Mm-hmm. I'm not calling you broke. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> um, keep. Keep the Patreons coming. Free me from these shackles. Um, anyways, what I'm replying to, I listened to this episode. I want to say it was on the daily about composting your body when you die. Mm, so I saw you posted that. Yeah, you. There's like formal burial that we all know. You go in the coffin, boom, bam. There's cremation, and then. I want to say there's like one other one. Uh, Maybe there isn't. Can't you be embalmed? Embalming. You in a drawer and you can pull them out. Yes, you can be embalmed. That's the third one. All of these had to be like (laughs) legalized, like by the state, like as new forms of burials are like introduced. And the newest one is like human composting. I think New York just passed it. California may have passed it. Oregon, maybe Washington. I want to say more Mm. of those like out west states. Essentially, what happens is they use this process and you're composted with like other natural things, leaves Mm. and shit. I don't know. Listen to the podcast. But then (laughs) your family gets returned mad dirt and like your body, like you're you are in the soil. I'm like, that's amazing. I would love to do that. And then I could, you know, you guys could all get my soil and plant a tree with me in the soil or you could be used on like um, conservation locations where they're trying to build more trees and like my body could be used to fertilize trees and greenery. I'm like, I'm obsessed with that. But apparently my religion, you're not supposed to cremate. But like, I was going to ask, what do y'all do? You you are buried. My mom was explaining this to me. It's something because we believe in reincarnation, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I think I'm going to do that. I like the idea of the tree part. But it would have to be, like, a big tree in a park. Like, please do not give me your um, ashes soil and ha- think I'm going to plant something in my backyard because it's going to die. <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you right now. It could die. I'm not going to take care of my it. soil. <laughs> I might be like you'll a, just be a sitting flourishing rose bush. That, I mean, that's fire. I think that's pretty fly. Well, there was a man whose sister did it, and he was an avid gardener, and so was she. That makes he sense. Collected these little like Japanese trees, and so when he died, everyone in the family got a little tree with his soil, and then and then they all got a tree. I think that's beautiful, mm-hmm. and. Formal burial burials are taking up mad space. Like they're we're running out of space to bury people. So it's become a whole thing. And we could always use more trees and greenery. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So that's what I'm replying to. <laughs> my death plan. Oh my God. That's you heard it here first. She's uninjured. <laughs> Never mind. I I love There's when a dark connection reply. there. Okay. I love Whoa. when I learn something. Yeah. Same. Same. So that was great. Um, I can go. go ahead. I am replying to Doja Cat. Mm-hmm. So she wore this red look at the Scaparelli show. Mm. 
Uh, her face was completely covered in these like red stones that Pat McGrath, a black renowned makeup artist, did. Um, and people were upset at her for not wearing lashes. So crazy. So Doja Cat <laughs> came the next day with eyel- false eyelash eyebrows, an eyelash mustache, an eyelash beard. <laughs> And she was like, the people wanted lashes, so I'm giving them lashes. And it was just just so iconic and so funny to me. She's, um, she's such a like a quirky person, yet so talented. I mean, mm. she did have her white supremacist cat moment, but mm. I think we've since I forgiven her. Stop calling her white supremacist cat. No, I think we've since forgiven her. But people were saying that she looks like the late, the great Dubois. Dubois. Oh yeah, they were. <laughs> W.E.B. Dubois. Stop. <laughs> they said she looked and like. Just, I just buy Sarah. She did come from Because um, <laughs> she had on like this like old puffed out suit. I saw. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. I it was did. pretty iconic. But I'm replying to that. And what I'm leaving on red, we may have spoken about before, but I haven't visited Zeus in a while. And, mm. you know, last night my a man is on a business trip, so I'm home alone. and I. If I'm watching Zeus and he's around, it irritates him. So I don't watch it when he's around. Good. Good. So when he's not around, I watch <laughs> Zeus. And my friend came over last night and we watched Baddies West. Ridiculous. I need to catch up. There's only one episode out. Okay. All so right. easy. Get into it. It's, oof. The girls it's were bad. fighting very fast. Yeah. Very fast. Wigs were fl- flying. Breasts was out. Mess. I know. It's, it's it was bad. messy. There's one girl from, she's like Dominican, so she's cussing people out in Spanish. Anyways, um, but then, since there was only one episode of Baddies West, I turned mm-hmm. to Chris Sean Rock. No! And yes. mm-hmm. It was so, it was like watching a car crash. No, seriously. I binged the like, whole thing. <laughs> I, so did I. Oh my God, you did. I stayed up till 2 a.m. My friend I left and I was still it. watching. Because I couldn't stop watching, but I was so disgusted with myself for watching. And so like, oh, I just want to give her a hug. I want to give him a hug, too. Mm-hmm. They're both young. She's 22 and he's oh 26. God. Oh, she's wow. 22. Um, I may be off by a year, but when I Googled it, that's what like it said. Um, now. But she's also young. And then like I was on the episode where they went to therapy and it was just so uncomfortable to watch like mm-hmm. she's clearly not used to talking about how she feels or processing emotions he just doesn't talk either i was just like what super sad fuck? they just have a reliance on alcohol there and then they like, were drinking. she's drinking in therapy taking drinking shots in therapy, in therapy. Shots. the, the whole show she's this? drunk the whole show and, and people are feeding her alcohol yeah. too like when she starts tweaking Blueface would be like, come here, take a shot, drink. You know you want to drink. And she just gets worse. That's fucked but up. But I will say, like, I feel like online everyone's like, it's Blueface's fault. It's Blueface's fault. I also had some empathy for him because I feel like she just spazzes out. Like, and he's like, please stop. Like, there's a, there's an episode where he like, they don't show it, but she hits him with a bottle and his whole back of his head is mm-hmm. like sliced. It looks like he needs stitches. Yes. And he's just like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And she's like, no, like, I love you. Da, da, da. It's just like, oh, it was so toxic. And it did, not that I've ever been in anything that toxic, but it did remind me of like, you know, being young and being in those relationships where it's just like so unhealthy. And mm-hmm. listeners, if you're in that sort of thing, I think it tends to happen in like the early 20s. Mm. You don't need to be there. Step away, step away. That's not love. That's not love. No. And maybe it is love, but it's not the love you need. It's not healthy. Mm -hmm. It's not good for you. You know, maybe he does love her and she loves him, but it's just, oh. It's so bad. Yeah, I watched part of Jason Lee's uh, interview with them, and she's just, like, all over the place. Like, she doesn't stay on topic. She starts laughing and making weird jokes when she's speaking it starts to become like unintelligible you're like what are you saying was that what did you just say and yeah. like blue face is just sitting there like looking uh uncomfortable and then the, the episode that really got me is when they go back to visit her family in oh. baltimore 
And she's and so emotional. Yes. Well, first, she's so emotional and like worked up because she just wants to, to her family and her man to have like a nice meeting. She just mm-hmm. wants them all to show up, sit down and eat and for nobody to be wild. But she doesn't know how to like express that. So she's just bursting into tears, screaming, stealing cars, wanting to fight, like just losing her shit. It's crazy. Yes. And then the family members are out so of their minds. They're crazy. Not Blue crazy, face but it's like punched the dad in the face. Yeah, they all have so much trauma. Punched, after the yes. dad punched him first, which oh was my wild. God, this has to stop. They have. They Make all have trauma. Stop. They don't know how to they express their trauma. emotions, and it's just you just see how that shit becomes generational. That mm. show right there is generational trauma. Yeah, right because there. even Blueface's mom. Yeah, yeah. She's like so possessive of him, and. Then that causes issues. So the mom and sister are fighting for Sean. It's just like, oof, I don't get it. It's bad. And they're but then they have kids. these sweet moments. Right. So like it's with just, the jackets. Yeah. And, and then she, she bursts into crying. tears because she's so, like, she literally is a ball of emotions. And she's a I ball think somewhere of inside of her, she's a sweet girl. Like, I literally oh, want to give her a hug. sure. And you even see that on baddies. Because on baddies, I'll just give this little piece away because it's only one episode. But. She like doesn't show up to a few things and they're all like, who does she think she is? Like she thinks she's an A-lister. You're mm-hmm. on baddies too. You need to be here. And she like calls them and she's like, listen, I'm going to come to everyone with respect. Please don't try to disrespect me to get some sort of clout for TV. Like mm-hmm. I just want to come and just be regular with everyone. Clean slate. And apparently, you know, doesn't work out. That they way, don't but- like that. Yeah. Well, also, she's just such like, a short yeah. fuse. You Like I'd be afraid to interview her. Yes. You say the wrong thing, she might launch at you. No, literally. I've been watching a lot of her interviews and on the Jason Lee one. She's like, this is the only one I like because I guess she went off on the people at uh, on lip service. So I was like, what if we got Krishan on our show? Virtually, I'd be okay. Virtually. And I think we could figure I, out how to how to approach it with kindness. You know? Yeah, I, know. I want, but like, but she doesn't accept any uh, critique. No, she does not. So mm, God bless. God bless. Shade is like <laughs> I think to say anything about the topic. Come on, make it stop. 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 Oh, and then God, just yeah. re- just really quick, like it's just you can see that she comes from very little in terms of finances. And so like now she's making money. Mm-hmm. So she's like, How can I not love this man? He changed my life. Like you see that aspect mm-hmm. of it too. So mm-hmm. it's just and then the family. Wants to act like they're against him, but also they like, they want to capitalize off of all the things that they've built. Right. They're like, Krishan, yeah. you have your whole family on your back. Exactly. She's like the youngest of like 12 or some shit. Right. Yeah. Oh, so bad. It's, it's just so deep. bad. Oh, yeah. I heard they're getting married tomorrow, TMZ well, said. I heard they are pregnant. Yep. Mm hmm. And but they cheat she on each other. The, yep. When she announced the pregnancy, Blueface is like, that ain't my kid. Yeah, because she cheats. And then he was like, she was in the club drinking on the night she announced her pregnancy. So she only mom. cheats. She says she only cheats because she wants to be with him. But then he cheats on her first. So then she's like, I'm not going to be stupid in the house. So I'm going to go fuck someone else. And she's like, it doesn't even feel good because the only person I love is Blue. Mm. It's real sad. Shadi's disgusted mm. by us. Very. <laughs> I can't believe I binge watched that show. I mean, you know, that'll bring me into my on red slash reply. And then I have a small reply. I binge that show while I was at Sundance Film Festival, which is so <laughs> ironic. Get to um, high brow to low brow. You know, I was like so tired hiding in my room from all of the shenanigans. I was like, I'm gonna watch Crazy in Love. And I did. I binged the whole shit while I was there. And then went outside and like I would like watch an episode, then go see a film. Um, yeah, literally balance. Um, leaving the whole, like, I think the last episode we talked about how excited I was to go. I went, it was amazing. It's super magical. Park city is just a gorgeous place in general. Like we should all go, even if it's outside of Sundance time, just to like ski, be in the mountains. It is magical. It looks like, like out of a, out of a storybook, like out of a fairy tale, truly. Um, just amazing views. It's just gorgeous. And everybody there is so kind. I actually 
met a lot of black people there and I was super surprised. I met like my first Uber driver was this black man who who lived in Atlanta, said he went there for like to visit a family friend in like 20 years ago and he never went back. He was like, I want like us to know that this is a place where we can come. It's a super like tolerant, open-minded, free, safe space. He's like, so, I, I shouldn't have used that word. That wasn't the right <laughs> yeah. word. Um, he's like, people still, they, they all leave their doors open. Like, safe. Yes, yeah, super safe, super accepting. Just people treat people like human beings. It was interesting. I met tons of like different people from all over the world that had immigrated there, that were living there, working. Wow. I don't know. The town itself is cool. Sundance was really fly. It's just like extremely tiring. And I did it like Sundance light. Like the executives that are like over me were going to see like six movies a day. I can't oh. imagine. I went to see like the at max three. I was falling asleep in the movie theater. Like Three a day? Three a day. Yes. Three a day, three a day, and you're your running favorite? from theater to theater to theater to theater, like, and there's some are in the town, some are outside the town, some are da 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 da, and the Ubers are mad bread, or you got to get in a shuttle bus that you know I don't even know I didn't take it to the last day because I was like, am I supposed to stand in the cold? And you really only have like ten minutes to get to your next movie, so like that's a whole thing. Lord. Oh my God. Like, so it's the movies and then it's like the daytime parties, activations and stuff. Like you could spend the whole day, like not even going to movies and just going to like sponsored like lodges. So like mm -hmm. Chase Sapphire is there and White Claw is there and Canon is there and our friends from Macro are there and my company was there and just like all sorts of people are there. And they have panels throughout the day with like amazing filmmakers. Like Ryan Coogler did a panel. Um, Lena Waithe was on several panels. It was very black too. And maybe that's you know I choose to curate my time like that. But like mm -hmm. I was seeing black stuff it and seeing black, black people speak. Yeah, definitely. Um, went to some fly parties, like house parties that were sick and big, huge homes. Just dope. Just fly and Did met people know? that are just plugged and moneyed and in the industry and like dead ass about the things that they're doing. And it's super cool to see people there that were a part of like making a film happen because this is like their big moment. Like they get to premiere it. They've never seen it with an audience before. You'll see everybody walking around with like beanies with the name of the film that they worked on and they'll be like in a squad together. And I was like, that is so cool. Like I actually really aspire to have that type of moment. Cause I think that is just amazing. You come together with your whole team. So mostly all these films I went, people would invite their everybody down onto the stage. Like the director would be the one doing the Q and A, but they'd be like, I need this one and the lighting person and the blah, blah, blah. And all the people. And it's just dope. It was fly. It was amazing. I'll go back, but I will be sleeping and maybe seeing like one film a day. And like, I'd like to go back as like a spectator, not for work. I'd like to go mm -hmm. back to like enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Did you so, have favorite films? Yeah, actually. I want to, I have one that I'll talk about for my Black Girl Doing Shit. But um, another film that I saw that was really good was called uh, Against the Tide. It was about these two. In, um, men that live in Bombay, but they're part of an indigenous group called the Kolis. So fascinating. First of all, it was a documentary, but it was so narrative driven that you would never have known that it was a documentary. Like there was no talking heads or anything. It's very like, um, fly on the wall, I guess. Like the camera, you don't even know that it's there. There's the people are having these conversations with each other that are so perfect. I'm like, was there a sort of a script or did you guys advise them how the scene was going to go? Cause it was just too perfect. It's like, Basically, these tribes are known for being fishermen. So one of the guys fishes in the traditional Koli way, like in lower waters with like a smaller boat, net fishing. And then the other guy, he studied in Scotland and he thinks he's like some, you know, progressive dude. He got a watch. He got all this like fancy <laughs> stuff. He lives, he lives in, yeah, he is. He lives in like the city of Bombay. The other guy lives in like a town, a rural area. So the guy that lives in the city of Bombay does deep sea fishing with like a huge boat. He has a huge team. And basically it was interesting too, because they were able to make commentary on um, like climate change and just, you know, detrimental climate practices. So I guess like there's some fishermen mostly from China and I don't know where else, but they do like LED fishing. So they'll drop like LED lights in the water to attract the fish. Mm -hmm. And people have said, especially like people from that Koli tribe and, and parts that live on like the Indian Ocean, are like this is 
not the way we're supposed to treat the sea. Basically, you're taking advantage of the sea by getting these fish in a way that's like not natural. And then the LED, I guess, is bad for the waters. So this guy, the progressive fisherman, is like the whole time grappling with, am I going to do LED fishing? I know it's illegal. I know it's not, like not the spiritual right thing to do. But then at the end, you see him actually do it. And he catches no fish because all the water. Ruining it. Sorry. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> all the water is empty. There's like no fish left in the water. They have been just drained of fish so much. They overfished. Yeah. And then the guy is in so much debt. I mean, it was just crazy. It was, they both have kids. They want to do everything for their kids. The guy, the old, old time fisherman ends up having to sell his boat and his Girl, mom is in tears. Him, you can't tell the whole film. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's done. It's done. Now it's like, it do I need to watch it? Amazing. <laughs> Sorry. It's just so good. Okay. So yeah, that, see it anyway. Because the scenes, the way it's shot is gorgeous. It's stunning. So yeah. Um, so I saw that. Um, I saw a movie about um, the abortion pill, which was interesting. And like all these women, these like underground organizations that are shipping out abortion pills to sit to places where, where it's illegal. And they're doing it in these really discreet ways or packing the pills so that like when they ship, nobody can tell there's pills in the bag. So a lot of people's faces had to be concealed. And the woman started filming it, filming it in like 2017 through 2022. So it shows like the overturning of Roe wow. v. Wade and stuff. That was really good. And all the women that were in the film were there. So they got up there. Child, I was crying. Of course. I realized during this festival, I'm truly like such a crybaby. Like the littlest <laughs> things are making me ball crying. So yeah, that's like an on red because I was exhausted, but a reply because it was super beautiful and a really dope experience. And then a quick reply to Beyonce's riff on Drunk in Love that she <laughs> remixed for her show in Dubai. Chelsea, have you been practicing? I figured maybe we could sing it together. Yeah, I have, actually. <laughs> I knew you <laughs> I could. I could play it so we have support. No, no, <laughs> Support no, no. track. Acapella. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go first. Oh, oh, it's a competition? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm scared. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, play it on the phone at least. Yeah, I have to play it on the phone. And then I'll like, we'll do it together. Like, just <laughs> chime in when it starts because you'll feel inspired. Hold on. I had the video up and then it went what? away. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. Yeah, I've done it better before. I was great, <laughs> great job. <laughs> that was great. It's I'll so save mine good. for the Patreon. I'm screaming. <laughs> I'll do and a better I'm version on the Patreon. Screaming. But yeah. I love how we're just getting these little bits and bites and it's just been amazing. Ah, oh, so good. Okay. That so my good. black girl doing shit. Oh no, sorry. Hotline bling. It's not, it's, it's kind of quiet over here. Um, yeah. Nothing too crazy, you know? Not well, much. You got something? I mean, it was bling and I guess that's what the episode is about. With yeah, like so. all the pictures and stuff. From oh yeah, my birthday. But Your we'll birthday? get more into that later. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, I still have to send you pictures. <laughs> oh, same. Sorry, I don't have that many. <laughs> it's any consolation. Uh, so, um, I'm gonna rep- um, our black girl doing shit this week is Beth Ann Hardison. She Yay. is an American fashion model and activist from Bed Stuy. Period. Blah, 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 um. Blah, blah, blah. She's well known for being one of the first high profile black models after her appearance at the 1973 Battle of Versailles fashion show, which I think mm. this was the one they talked about in, yeah, in the, the, the documentary where she like this whole black squad of models went to Versailles to model. And like at the time, you know, modeling is just like you're, they're walking very still. This troupe of models had movement, energy, flair, flavor. And that's what made like the modeling of the 70s and 80s like exciting and alive. And then they, the, so basically she, sorry, I should mention she has a documentary called Invisible Beauty, which she was one of the directors for. And I got to screen that at Sundance. Um, so yeah, after making like a huge splash as a model, she ends up having a kid. Did you know that she's the, the mother of Kadeem Hardison, Dwayne Wayne of A Different World? 
Fun fact. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. The guy with the flip glasses. Yeah, exactly. Well, that makes sense. I didn't know that was his last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super interesting. But she talks about how, like, when she had him, her mom was like, go ahead, live your life like you're modeling. And she was like, okay. So she, like, would come back and visit him on weekends. And she talked about how she just traveled all over the world. She had a Swedish lover. She was on boats and things in Brazil. She's like, I always ended up back in Mexico. That literally I started crying. She was like, Mexico just always does something for me. She ended up buying a house there. She spent a whole bunch of time in Mexico City. I was like, are you kidding me? This woman from bed But I'm also like, where her baby at? Yes. But then eventually she went back. So he did all right for himself. Yeah, yeah. But then they moved in together and she apparently was like a super intense mom and was like do you want to be an actor okay you're going to be an actor enrolled him in all these classes did all this stuff and then he landed the gig and like made money but something that was super cool is after she got out of modeling she started her own modeling agency and she was the person who discovered uh tyson beckford (gasps) yes so there's a bunch of tyson in the in the in the movie and he was looking gorgeous they talked about how they got him into to be like the face of Ralph Lauren and how huge of a deal that was and how he was basically like a pop star. He would like go do signings at department stores and little girls and women and everybody would lose their fucking mind screaming. He always took his shirt off at every signing he did, (laughs) which I just think is just so ridiculous and just great. Like amazing kind of (laughs) she, she had, she discovered like so many models. When you looked at her slate of models, it was just super diverse Mm -hmm. and also very black at the same time. Um, so then when the runway started to get really white, um, they, a lot of people credited that to Prada at one point. And they also said something like when the Berlin Wall fell, then suddenly people were just trying to get all these like German thin models on the runways. And then the mm. runways just became white as hell. And instead of having all that flair they used to have, it just became like straight up and down, like kind of militant, stoic ass walking. Mm. So she was responsible for starting all of these like kind of think groups think tanks to figure out how to like make the runways more diverse she wrote an open letter in the new york times that like made all these um like fashion houses and agencies have to be more accountable and in 2014 she won the cdfa founders award Mm -hmm. and she's just super fucking inspiring so many people have were calling her like their godmother and like talking about how much she influenced them and was there for them and when this film comes out, I just highly recommend that everybody sees it. I was yes. long crying the whole time. I'm so oh excited God, to see it. exciting. From the sty. Went to Wingate. Like, what? Wingate! Yes. Wingate. Um, yeah, so shout out to Bethan Hardison. Let's get into the group chat. I love that. All right, y'all. It's time for the group chat. chat, chat, chat. Yes. Okay. Take it the away, LA girly. LA doll. Okay. Well, so we're talking about my birthday, right? We're talking about your birthday. We're talking about that's what we're talking about because I didn't make that list. So <laughs> yeah, we don't have to did... make the list. It's still, it's it's <laughs> a combination of everything. You've been no, there no, for no, a no, year. No, it's no, your no, birthday. No, it needs to be more thoughtful than that. But yes, oh, I have been I here for a year birthday. now. Um, in LA, well, not yet, but almost the end of January will make a year. Beginning of February will make a year. So almost. Um, but okay. Also need to hear from your perspective. When did you guys know? Slash, tell me from well, your you side. You know when I found out when okay, I texted back up, you. Everybody, oh, Chelsea okay. had a surprise birthday party <laughs> for her thirty. I mean, if you don't know that, like, do you even like us? I'm like, do you even right. follow do us? You follow you should know this by now. But yes, for, if you've been under a rock, Chelsea had a surprise birthday party. Twenty fifth so, birthday. Oh right, sorry. Wait. I had a surprise twenty fifth birthday <laughs> for the and fifth time. Okay, so I'll tell you from my perspective and then you guys tell me from your perspective. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, big birthday's coming. I am across the country. A few of my friends, including you all, have were like, what are you doing for your birthday? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a good planner. Um, I also would never ask or think that anyone would like come across the country Mm -hmm. for my birthday. So I was just like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. So I was kind of getting the birthday blues a little bit. And it was so funny because like right before the whole weekend, Taylor and I had dinner together like the week before. And I was also like, okay, girl, you're not going to ask me nothing about my birthday. Right. (laughs) Because she didn't bring it up at all. So then I brought it up and I was like. She played off a little bit. She didn't bring it up at all. And I'm like, hello. And then I was like, 
I'm feeling a little down about my birthday. I mean, I'm sure we're going to do something, but like, I just don't know what. And it's like kind of a big birthday. But then I'm also like, oh, that's so stupid that we make such a big deal out of these birthdays. But like, I'm glad we did. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's from my perspective. And then. Yeah, we'll, we'll do yours. the pre yeah the pre birthday, and then we'll get to the weekend of your birthday. Yes. I mean, Shade almost blew the whole right you, thing up. You knew when I found out when I messaged you because a old friend of mine who we're not as close, but you guys are still close, sent me a message asking for my number, and I was like, "This is so fucking weird." So, so I so ask for your number for a save the date, right? Specifically, so, so I messaged you being like. Did she get hacked? Like sent a screenshot of it. What is happening? And then I asked her. Yeah, because I was genuinely like, this is so weird. Like, I don't want to give this bot my number. (laughs) 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 And then you ask her and she's like, oh, I did get. She said she did get hacked. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. Meanwhile, I had just gotten that same message and I almost sent it. And something in me told me just not to be like, oh, my God, she they hacked me too or like something because i feel like if i would have doubled down on it well it either would have looked like she really got hacked or it would have right. been like hmm. no i would have had no you idea. really would have had no I idea i don't think she would have then no. deduced like they're throwing a surprise birthday right. party yeah. for me i'd have been like sis you really Especially, got hacked yeah true because it was also in like i can't remember when this was it was a while ago yeah it was like a while ago september right i was like it was still kind of warm i was in mexico for some reason so maybe it was november November. I don't know. Either way, it was a minute ago. So you guys knew. And we knew. Yes. So the Friday, I'm working as as I normally would on a Friday. And then the door opens and I'm like, fiance? (laughs) And he doesn't say anything. (laughs) So then I run to get a knife. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because I was like, "Is someone breaking in?" So I run to get a knife, and then I see it's my sister. You ran from and here. got a knife. Yes, I'm screaming. I don't blame you. She lucky mm-hmm. she didn't get sliced up. <laughs> right, shit. <laughs> um, but it was my sister, and I was like, "Oh my god!" So that was nice. And then that evening we had dinner. My sister, my guy, and myself. And when we went to the restaurant. My two other friends from New York were there. And I was like, oh, my God. And my friend from L.A. I was like, oh, my God. OK, s- surprise. Yeah. And Wait, then, so you have two friends. Can you the couple. give um, the couple? Gigi. Gigi. OK. Yes. Oh, because I was trying to figure mm-hmm. out how she was doing it because she was like, she doesn't know that I'm here. So I was I like, no idea. And was she saying it like she was surprising you or that she just happened to be in town? No, they were like, oh, my God, this is your surprise. Everyone came to New okay. L.A. We're going to Perfect. Everything. That's good. Mm. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, my like a piece of home is here. That was so mm-hmm. nice. So we had dinner. And then after dinner, I'm like, OK, we're, they're like, OK, we're headed home. And then we didn't go home. We went to Top Golf, And I was like, oh, my God, Top Golf. I love Top Golf with my family and friends from home. That's the birthday. Um, so then the next day, my sister was like, um, no, the next day, my friend was like, oh, we have a work thing. Um, Wait, when did B get there? Bree. I'll Brie. tell you. Okay. So so Saturday comes and they're like, okay, tonight we're going to G's work thing. And he works in a really fun industry. So I was like, oh, that's going to be fun. But I had nothing to wear. And I was like, I'm just going to wear this black dress. And they were all like, no, it's still your birthday weekend. Get something new. But in L.A., it was pouring rain. And I was like. Like, you guys all just forced me to straighten my hair because my hair was, like, curly. And they were like, oh just God. straighten it. It's your birthday. And I was like, okay. That is so funny because Shadi literally said that. she was Because we had recorded with you, like, right before that. And you had your hair curly. And she was like, oh, my God. I wonder if they're going to tell her to straighten her hair. <laughs> like, what's the they look going to be giving? <laughs> they did. But it was like, I was like, why am I straightening my hair if it's raining? And they were like, it's your birthday. Like, you that's your look if you want to do it and i was like but it's raining anyways they convinced me to do it i go to the mall in the pouring rain there's nothing at the mall so now i'm getting frustrated because i'm like i can just wear a dress that i have but you guys keep pressing me about maybe finding something for my birthday but there's nothing at the mall anyways i come back home and on the bed there's this like 
beautiful Lueve like silver top, which I ended up wearing that night. And I was like, oh, how nice, like something for me to wear. So I start getting, I shower, I get dressed, and then I go to start my makeup. And then the doorbell rings and they're like, oh, there's a makeup artist here for you. And I'm like, okay, you guys are doing so like, it's so nice. Like at this point, I'm already like, it's a lot. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did my, she did my makeup. And then when my makeup is like halfway done, the door opens again. And I see these big silver balloons, you know, the, the two and the five. (laughs) And, (laughs) and it's our other friend Bree coming in. And I'm like, wait, what the hell? What are you doing here? And she was like, I came for your birthday. So then at this point, I'm like, okay, we're probably doing a birthday dinner. Mm-hmm. With everybody like, that's already here. With everyone like, that's maybe here. Maybe the people that are at, that you know that live there. So you figured that maybe. it wasn't, maybe I didn't you figured even, it wasn't the, the work event? I thought we would go to the work event because uh-huh. he works in a fun industry. And like yeah. I've been to one of his work events and it was lit. Okay. Um, And then maybe go to dinner with the people that were there. Okay. Um, so, cause they were still like, let's go to the work event first. They kept saying first. So I figured there was a plan after. After. Yeah. And we hadn't eaten dinner yet. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so then we go to the place where his work event was and then we opened the door and it was all of you. It was like a bunch of people from New York. It was so, it was like the nicest thing. I think one of the nicest things anyone has ever done. I was so grateful there were people from new york people from or a person from london a person from london um it was like i also didn't realize it was an open bar until recently i thought people were just buying me drinks all night <laughs> girl that's why we were all in that's why everybody hurts. was <laughs> we were all, it was On an open one. bar did you eat anything because there apparently there was food i had no food didn't eat no. just drink just drank. The music was fire. Well, initially it was, I think, hip hop. And then Shade changed the tone and it became a bash. It was a flat bush. <laughs> and we were back party. in flat bush, which was amazing. Appropriate. Appropriate. Um, and then my friend Taylor comes up to me and she's like, I know you. We knew you wanted to wear this dress for your birthday. So come change. Like they brought the dress. So like yes. I changed into the dress. Um, and it was just, it was just so much fun. And then afterwards, I think I had a really fun time and I was like, did I just have a fun time? Cause it was my party, but everyone I asked, they said that they had fun. No, it was lit. Okay, good. Um, and then we came back to my house. I don't think you got, did you guys come back? I was was blacking out. out. (laughs) We came back. (laughs) I literally cooked macaroni and cheese bites for everyone. I cooked. Oh shit, I should have went there. What are those things with the, um. With the spinach and the cheese. Oh, spanakopita? Spanakopita. I made soup dumplings. I made gyoza. We had a full feast. Then we ordered pizza. It was just, it was fun. And then the next day, I think it was supposed to be a surprise, but at this point, everyone was like, okay, girl, you had enough surprises. <laughs> the next day, we had a brunch, which was really That fun. was so fun. Yeah, and it was like it everyone was could bussing. recap. Oh, the food was amazing. And yeah, that was that was so fun. We just played a bunch of games and like yeah. that part of your building is super beautiful. The drinks were flowing again. Everyone was flowing. cracking me up. Everyone's so yeah. funny. The energy and was then just we were really all like, good. all right, we're ready for the wedding. Like we all get along. Well, that that's what I kept saying. I was like, oh my God, it's so nice that everyone kind of was able to, cause you know, you have different friend groups, but everyone was yeah. kind of like getting along and it was mm-hmm. nice. So I was like, okay, the wedding's going to be fun. And yeah. now, I have a wedding budget, so now I actually have started wedding stuff. So what you oh failed God. to mention that it just happened yesterday. So that's <laughs> a whole day. Yeah. What? Well, that's you know so now. Many questions. <laughs> okay, so, so we should yeah. have a, wedding a little episode. tease. <laughs> yeah. No, do it on the Patreon. <laughs> oh yeah, Patreon. Mm-hmm. We also need to figure out how to make this a tax write-off. So maybe we could record an episode. No, <laughs> at the wedding at the yes. wedding <gasps> yeah record we could a do speech. a live episode it, record like, a maybe. no we can record it could be a vlog hello yeah damn could that be a 
we need to talk let's to a tax professional. So yeah, let's look into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, um, don't, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. But yeah, 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 probably. But it was an incredible birthday. I'm so grateful for you all for coming and not and not spoiling the surprise. Like no one, how did no one spoil the surprise? There were so many people involved. We almost all did, though. But, like, not in a way that I guess you caught, which is so crazy. Yeah. Like, I there were several friends that were that already in L.A. that were so posting about it. They blocked me. People yeah, they blocked, blocked you. from their stories. And the Sh- one Shade person, blocked you, too. Oh, because we were in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> I was blocked from everyone's stories. The only person who I saw was in L.A. And I pressed her, too. I was like, what's the horror? Yeah. I was like, so you're in L.A.? Or are your friends in New York? Because her friend posted her and they are oh. both in L.A. So I was like, either you're in L.A. or they're in New York. And she was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm in L.A. But I didn't even bother reaching out because it was like so in and out. And I was like, OK, girl. <laughs> <laughs> he was about to be getting the chop. <laughs> but it was amazing. It was amazing. No, it was, it was so fun. I couldn't tell you many details. I was probably black out by <laughs> around the time the cake came things started to get really fuzzy I don't know. really fuzzy the picture showed never that. ate the cake i don't know what the fuck was me going neither on. i didn't really i saw it come out and i don't know where it went it was good the cake was good Damn. oh my god and then w- one of my friends so then i got the, the story later so there was a whole group chat called pinky xxx because which X-X-X is hilarious is 30 even though i'm 25 so Obviously, they don't understand they the rules, but mm-hmm. right. Um, so there was like a planning committee, and then when I got there, there were these like pictures, oh, and God. it was like two pictures of me, but one picture that like I literally want to get framed. It was like a collage, and I don't know how much time you guys spent looking at that, but it literally included everyone. It did. Mm-hmm. It did. It really did. And that doesn't happen. I feel like. Yeah, we were shook. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It was it was like such it was just so many pieces of your life. Yeah. yeah. Too. Which I love. Which was super love. cool. Yeah. 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 A job well done. The, the, Amazing. The girls did a good job. I was like It was great. I would have been so stressed out, but I was just texting G the whole time and we were just <laughs> like, All right, how's things going on your end? Everything's good. Okay, cool. Like coast is clear over here <laughs> but i'm like i want to like give everyone like a thank you present i'm like thinking of what to do because it was just so nice it was so nice i will take no i'm kidding <laughs> you don't have to do that you don't you can send cards if you want if you want to, to. Yeah. But, yeah you know people do this because they love you that's all exactly it just feels good okay. to do things for people you love yeah you know? so cute. now we're all old officially welcome i've joined the club Real ghetto over here but <laughs> no i really i was like she's thriving i like to see how i mean how, it's great um, in terms of like the level up it sucks mm-hmm. in terms of the daily body deterioration but yes you know the metabolism you take the good with the bad yeah but the crazy thing is we're still just babies in this life mm-hmm. we, we are a lot more but you know what's so wild? I was talking to my chiropractor um, who is much older than I thought he was, but I thought he was like 60. And I was like, all right, we're like 30 years apart. What's the big deal? Like, and to me, I guess because my siblings are so much older, like I have a weird warp on age. But we were talking about how like as you get older, like ages that seem so wild, like are not a big deal anymore. Like when you're like 45, someone who's probably like 55 or 60, it's like, yeah, whatever. We old. So I'm like, we're slowly like inching into like this kind of like just grown bucket. I'm not going to call it mm-hmm. old. We're just getting, we're getting grown. Even though lots changes in a year and you get so much wiser, it's kind of cool that like people start treating you like you've got a little cred. Yeah. I think, I wonder if that's like a human defense mechanism because I was, I forgot what comedian, I think it was Dion Cole and he, and he was saying like, as you get older, because I think he's like 50s, maybe. And he's like, I really only got about 30 summers, summers left. Jesus <laughs> like, Christ. Like, when you start thinking about it like that. Yikes. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. No, 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 no. But, you know, Mm-mm. time does go by 
faster it seems as you get older. I mean, it's the end of January already. That's fucking weird. I cannot even wrap my head around how that's possible. But like, I still feel like I'm having a good time. So maybe I'm having a ball. I think that's why it's going fast. Yeah. I'm having a ball. No, well, there's an explained, you know, that show explained on Mm -hmm. Netflix. There's one on time. Um, And they do describe, I recall, how when you're younger, time moves so slow. Yes. Like, you know how a school year feels forever. Yes. A school day feels forever. Mm -hmm. But, like, as you get older, time does move faster. Why? Is it just the way you're able to process time? Maybe. Or something? Maybe. Maybe because you have more control of your schedule, too. So it's, like, it's not so much out of your hands. Yeah. Is that true? Shit. (laughs) No, I definitely but, remember the feeling of like not feeling like I had any control and that time felt like limited. Time and space felt limited when I was a kid and I got dropped off at school and my mom would just drive and go to wherever the fuck she got to go for the whole day and do whatever she did all day where long. where you wanted to go, Like girl. four or five different things she probably got to do and now I have to do many tasks. And that's Take annoying. me back to school, please. <laughs> right, <that>. literally. Right. <laughs> but I used to be like, wow, they're on the other side of the fence like in the world and I'm in the playground behind the fence like i have distinct memories of that what feeling Locked trapped in this cage. Going yeah it on the playground <laughs> yes yeah, so it's like wow the world is passing me by like i really used to feel like that i wanted to grow up very quickly but now you're Should here be. and now uh, now i have <laughs> what's that sizzle lyric saying. uh most of us are chasing youth yes is youth in is in the present <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. In the yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were. We didn't. We didn't yeah, have that <laughs> melody. I was the like, no, what? Was a little off. <laughs> that. I'm yeah, so we're still in our youth. Um, but yeah, just shout out to y'all. If the party goers are listening, thank you so, so much. Literally, so much. everyone that was there, like, is someone that's special to me. So, it was just really, it was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love it. It was super beautiful. I love surprise. I know. And it was nice so to fun. like come out and it was just overall a good weekend. Like mm-hmm. it was an it was perfect timing. It was just like chef's kiss. Wow. Just the rain though. I will say the rain. The rain, the rain was sucked. wild. And it doesn't rain here, but it rained right. for my birthday and it rained for partner's birthday. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The rain, but like and Matt, like that's how you know it was so fun. Like we were still having because so we much. still like, had if fun. It was sun, it would have been yeah. insane. It would have been. Oh, oh yeah. my god, it would have been nuts. Oh my god, we would have been yeah. frolicking because you can walk from that place to my house. I'm sure you could. We would have been drunk close. marching home. Oh. Yes, mobbing oh. out. Well, when we talk about your wedding on the Patreon, we can think about how we're gonna reenact lots of moments. Yeah, not reenact, recreate lots of fun moments. That's what I meant. Not but now I was like Googling weather because you guys know where I want to get married. But anyways, yes, we'll talk about it on the Patreon. Oh, you still want to do it there? Yes, there is a I rainy so. season, but we can, we can avoid it. Oh, my God. I yeah. hope so. Okay. Yeah. What would you do? Okay, ladies. Well, we have a what would you do that I'm just going to read very briefly. It's, I'm just going to read it. I saw it. When I read it, I was like, what the fuck? But. Um, I'm going to let this um, young lady be anonymous. They write, last year I met a guy on a dating app and we really hit it off. We hung out three times and hooked up twice. Soon after, later, I think they just met later, after, later, he called me and told me that he tested positive with two STDs. And I was upset because I thought he gave me STDs. We met up and talked about it and he said he hadn't slept with anyone in months. So ultimately concluded that I was the culprit. As I hooked up with one of my old college hookups unprotected a few weeks prior before I had met him. After talking it through, it seemed like we could move past it. But then he went through some personal stuff and we ultimately stopped talking. I deleted his phone number in an effort to move on, not to be tempted to drunk call or text, which I'm notorious for. I feel you. And mm-hmm. decided it was Relatable. just going to be over with. Fast forward almost a year. I couldn't stop thinking about how bummed I was by how that played out. And I reached out to him on Instagram, offering to grab a coffee, drink to catch up. He responded initially asking when I'm free. So it was looking promising, but then he didn't respond when I told him when I was free. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Is there anything I can do? Do I just give up on it? 
this escalated. I was like, what's going on with the STD? Mm-hmm. Where's, I hope you're good. But then you stop talking to yeah, you. Yeah, it seems like it's not like it might not be about the STD, right? I don't well, think it, it seems is. like she gave him the STD. Right. But it seems right, like, 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 like they tight. moved on. But then he had personal issues about right. like personal things and scheduling. And now he's being weird when reaching out. And I just. So it's one of those things like they didn't end for a reason, really, that had to do with them. Right. You know, like mm-hmm. if you end a relationship because someone moved or like, you know. They oh, didn't have a fight it, that ended it. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. circumstances mm-hmm. ended it. So then it always feels like it's unfinished. Right. Uh-huh. You seem young to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what um, I was thinking too. Here come Auntie. No, I'm just saying like, I'm looking, I'm like college, old college hookup. It's giving like, you might be like in your early 20s. 20s right? Just have fun, girl. If I would just be like, yo, are you free this day? And if he's like not about it, then just don't beat a dead horse. Move on. Like, if yeah. you really want to know and he didn't reply, just be like, does that work? Like, you could send a follow-up, but I wouldn't get your head too wrapped up in it. I'm curious as to why you can't stop thinking about him, though. What qualities do you like about this person? And maybe that's just a takeaway. A learning. That's about it. That was solid. I agree. Yep, I would agree. I think that's yeah. that's it. That's the way to go. Wow, look yeah, at us in our old age. Like, right? I'm like, what's happening? Oh what's about to happen? Child. What's happening? And then we get to the end and she's like, and he didn't respond to my dad. I was like, girl. Oh my God. Because I was reading it like, <gasps> oh. Well, I, I hope she takes that because I think that's very good advice and I totally agree 100%. So listeners, if you need advice on anything, please email us at hello at Black Girls Texting or you can DM us on Instagram at Black Girls Texting or on tic- the TikTok. Or Twitter, where Black Girls Text One. And I also want to give a special shout out to not only the wonderful, amazing people who came to my birthday, but also one of my friends revealed to me that her mom is in a book club and they listen to our podcast. So I want to give a special shout out to Dr. Black. Um, shout out to you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support and I love that you listen. I hope that we're not too naughty on the mic. Naughty on the mic. And shout outs to our patrons. We keep seeing new patrons come yes. in and we appreciate you all so much. Um, that's why we definitely try to make sure we have exciting, fun content for you. So subscribe if you want to get more of the juice, more of the tea. And yeah, we still have merch. Get some merch. <laughs> I figured out the Instagram thing, so we're good. And yeah. I said, oh, thanks. Shout out Chrissy Ford for the support. I saw some orders come out in after she posted. Um, yes. So those will be getting shipped out soon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and shout out. Sorry. One more shout out. <laughs> shout out. Not another industry podcast. I yeah. was a guest host and it was very really fun. So support him. That's a new podcast um, interviewing all sorts of people in the entertainment industry. Fab. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Bye-bye-bye.